Lubbock, Texas, where 200,000 can see forever across fields of cotton and pumps of black gold. But in the fall, Lubbock revolves around Texas Tech football. And when you're 9-0, tailgating tastes better than a five-star restaurant. Oklahoma State tonight hopes to play party crusher. Coach Mike Gundy comes armed with his own high-powered offense. He'll need it. He's matched against the hottest quarterback in the country, the Red Raiders' Graham Harrell. And his mad scientist of a coach, Mike Leach, always has a trick up his sleeve. And Leach tonight is wearing his West Texas tuxedo. at Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, Texas, where Oklahoma State is looking for their biggest win of the season against the number two Texas Tech team fighting to stay in the BCS driver's seat on Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. Tonight, the number two Red Raiders look to extend the longest winning streak in school history and in the nation as they host number nine, Oklahoma State. Another sellout crowd in Lubbock, hoping they experience the same kind of joy as they did a week ago. That wonderful result for them against Texas. Texas had just seized the lead. Jamar Wall returned the kickoff 38 yards. Colt McCoy couldn't bear to watch. Graham Harrell nailed four consecutive passes. And then a missed opportunity that will haunt the Longhorns for years. And Michael Crabtree scores a touchdown for the ages. Good evening, everybody, with Kirk Herbstreit, who has just arrived from Baton Rouge. Hi, Brent Musburger. <laughs> Kirk, we've got to go back and review one of the most amazing touchdowns and conclusions we've seen. Oh, we liked it so much, we decided to come back to Lubbock for round two tonight <laughs> against Oklahoma State. But you're right, if you go back to last week against Texas, the play of the year maybe in college football at this point, Crabtree isolated one-on-one -on -one against Curtis Brown. Here's the access look at it. This gives you an idea what Graham Harrell, who's ready already to throw the football. Look at Crabtree. You think he might go to the corner? There's a safety there. Earl Thomas, who's able to take him away. So Crabtree knows that Harrell's going to throw to his backside shoulder. Perfectly thrown. Crabtree makes the adjustment. Able to make the catch. Stay in bounds. Shocked everybody by getting his foot staying in bounds and then fighting and showing the strength to get the ball into the end zone. And Earl Thomas took an awful angle there that opened it up. Now the receivers tonight, we know about Crabtree and what he can do, but Des Bryant from Oklahoma State tonight. These two, I think, are the top two receivers in all the college football. 15 touchdowns apiece. Ding, ding. Let's see who's ready to go here. Round two. Kirk, Saturday night has gotten so big, ACDC has decided <laughs> to come back. Bring it on with rock and roll train tonight. <laughs> That Oklahoma State team has one loss. Should they beat Texas Tech? They're right back in the hunt. Well, absolutely. They're going to be a lot of once beaten teams now that have a shot at it. But if you're looking for the old proverbial hay in the barn, how about the Texas Longhorns? They've won their difficult schedule. They're sitting there and can win out. And the Florida Gators, they've got Alabama who survived today to give them that credible opponent when they have the SEC championship game. So I look at Texas Tech tonight as a football team. They've had the emotional high all week, Doug. I know that they're ready to play this football game. Oklahoma State's physical. Kendall Hunter runs the ball. OSU, everybody looking to see if they can position for the chance for the title. Absolutely. It comes down. There's four teams in the top 10 out of the Big 12 that all have a legitimate shot. SEC versus Big 12 champion possible national championship matchup and you know who's on the outside is USC sitting out there on the west coast in a poor conference where actually Oregon State controls their own destiny in that conference. Yeah you know what though when you're USC and I talked to Carroll this week he's got to win impressively he's got a great defense he's got Sanchez as a quarterback they're dominating people style points is what he's hoping for. Texas Tech looking not to have a letdown after that huge come from behind win against Texas a week ago. We, of course, will see you at halftime. Right now, let's send you out to the game. Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, and Brent Musburger. Well, John, the Oklahoma State Cowboys, they feel that they have been overlooked, and they come in a slight underdog here tonight. They've got a chip on their shoulder. They are ready to take on the hottest quarterback in the land. The Red Raiders are led by Graham Harrell. It's 
front night every night for that guard. And now leading him out is Ashley Hartog. Midnight Matador brings the unbeaten Red Raiders out. This has been the Nissan pregame shift. Kickoff for number nine, Oklahoma State. And number two, Texas Tech, coming up next. This ESPN telecast is available in high definition on ABC HD. Lisa Salters is standing by with Mike Leach. Let's go to Lisa. Thanks, Brent. Coach, second nationally televised night game in a, in a row. What did you have to do this week to keep your guys from being too high or too low? I uh, just kept the same routine. Everybody's excited. Everybody takes a lot of pride in what they do. and. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Thought we had a good week of preparation. Coach, you always seem so laid back. I'm curious, what's a guy like you thinking about just moments before a kickoff of a big game like this? Uh, the next play, uh, the first play, just uh, do the best we can. All right, thanks a lot. Good luck to you. Right. It's been a long time since Oklahoma State has won a football game in Lebanon. All the way back to 1944. That's prior to the end of the Second World War. And a year ago, it was a shootout in Stillwater, won by the Cowboys. And afterwards, of course, Mike Gundy's famous YouTube incident, which has been reviewed all week as we lead up to this game. Now, Gundy and the Cowboys won the toss. They did not take the football. They deferred. That means the mad scientist and the Red Raiders will go to work. Dan Bailey starts us off in Lubbock. From the seven yard line, Jamar Wall, who had the big return against Texas to set up that winning drive. Now, the impact players here, Kurt, for the Red Raiders. Well, Texas Tech has a lot of them. Michael Crabtree, again, one of the top receivers. I think the top receiver in college football. He'll be all over the field tonight. Edward Britton last week stepped up. A lot of times he'll be isolated and asked to help out and make a lot of plays. And then Shannon Woods and Baron Batch both have an opportunity to help the most productive position on this offense, which is the running back. Remember, the Red Raiders throw for a living. Other coaches throw for a hobby. They started off with Woods on a running play and nothing doing as the middle of the Cowboys line and linebacker Ori Lemon makes the stop. Very excited, I think, everybody is to see how Graham Harrell responds to such a big performance on such a big stage last night for himself and for the team. All of a sudden, he goes from being somewhat on the outside to now the front runner for the Heisman Trophy. He cannot press tonight, just keep doing what he's been doing. His first pass is on the money, but short. The yellow line indicating the first down, Lyle Leong with the first reception. He had nine different receivers a week ago against Texas. One thing that Oklahoma State will try to do tonight is disrupt the rhythm of Graham Harrell. And one of the things that Tim Beckman likes to do as a defensive coordinator is give a variety of looks, be multiple. Don't give Graham Harrell the same look from down to down. Try to confuse him and that powerful offensive line. Three and out. Not allowed in Lubbock. Recognizing the blitz here, man coverage. Guns are already up. Bobbled, they put it down on the ground. Loose ball. Cowboys are all over it. They say they've got it. They have recovered a fumble. On third down and one. It is the Cowboys defense storming the wall here in Lubbock early. I just talked about Tim Beckman loves to mix up the looks. He's had a lot of success, whether it's Missouri or facing Texas. The snap is pretty good. I think Graham Harrell, realizing the blitz was coming, got a little bit in a hurry that time and tried to get rid of the football and trying to get a hold of the ball to get rid of it quickly. Wasn't able to hold on to it. Oklahoma State catch the first break. Levine with the recovery. Zach Robinson drops off a little screen pass out of bounds, and that's Kendall Hunter, and he's one of the impact players, isn't he? Yes, he is. Texas Tech will play a lot of zone to try to slow down Des Bryant, who can hurt you in a hurry. Des Bryant excited tonight. Keep an eye on number one. Pettigrew also, the big tight end, has an ability to come after a defense down the field. Now, Kendall Hunter, along with Keith, Keith Poston, are the keys in my mind tonight for Oklahoma State because they have to run the ball. 
Second and seven, and here is that running attack. Bursting free. Hunter strong back. Takes it to the two-yard line. Kendall Hunter finally brought down by Darcel McBath. Well, outstanding vision here, and this really gives you an idea of what Hunter can do. The play's designed to go left. Good blocking on the backside there by Brady Bond on the linebacker. Opened up a huge seam to the backside, and Hunter, using his eyes, cuts to the backside. It picks up huge yards here for the Cowboys. Checking back at the sideline. Power eye look for the Cowboys. Wards the fullback. He will lead Hunter. Stood up battling his way toward the goal line. Talk about strength for the five foot eight running back. He powered his way into the end zone. You're right about the strength of Kendall Hunter. He's 5'8", but he's 200 pounds, and you better tackle him when he comes into the line of scrimmage because he does not give up on plays. And what a difference one week makes as far as the way this game has started. They're reviewing it up in the booth now to make sure he broke the plane. There was no indication there was a whistle, oh. but that was close. But he just kept churning his legs down there. Kendall Hunter. Watch, watch Brady Bond ran at the end, number 60. As he looks like he's stopped, Brady Bond gets involved and says, I'm just going to grab a hold of him and bring him into the end zone with me. Now, that could have been stopped by a whistle, but there are indications down on the field that it was not blown in that sequence. As uh, upstairs here, they continue to churn the... Uh, the videotape back and forth, forward and backward. Overhead view. Here, the ruling on his confirmed touchdown. Yeah, there was no way to turn that over unless one of the officials came to the referee and said he blew the whistle. Now, because of instant replay, sometimes they'll hesitate a little bit. And in that instance, Hunter took advantage of it and just battled his way into the end zone. Talk about strength here. Well, three plays for Texas Tech, a turnover. Oklahoma State capitalizes, recovers. Three plays later, they're into the end zone. And man, oh man, that's exactly how the Cowboys needed to start this football game. The man with the golden shoe. Dan Bailey makes it 7 nothing. Did the Red Raiders get an early wake-up call from the Cowboys? We're about to find out. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. Well, don't blink. Or they'll see another <laughs> touchdown from either side here. Look at uh, the touchdown drives for the Cowboys. Five plays or less second in the NCAA with the... 26 and six scoring plays at 50 plus yards. So we could be headed into the high 70s. Who knows here tonight? You like the shoes? Love the shoes. He whacked that one. This will come out on the 20. And Matt Weiner is standing by in New York for his first update on this Saturday night. Matt. And hi, everyone. I'm here all throughout your game to let you know what's happening, beginning with this Taco Bell update. Florida can clinch a spot in the SEC championship tonight against Vanderbilt. Tim Tebow, Lewis Murphy there to cap off a nine-play drive. 7-0 in a game happening over on ESPN2. USC out early against Cal. 3-0 Trojans. And Matt, that Trojan defense... And that Florida offense, they have both been spectacular. So we'll keep an eye on those two games. And here, Oklahoma State, a slight underdog, has gone ahead. And Harrell's having trouble in the early going. Stumbling will throw this one short to the sideline. We're camping out was the receiver known as the Elf, Eric Morris, with that grab. Anxious to see uh, Little Man last week had a big game, had a nice touchdown. But I'm anxious to see how Oklahoma State tries to, as I talked about in the first series, just disrupt and try to get pressure on Graham Harrell. That time only rushing three, brought a linebacker late on a blitz, and that's the changeup. That's what you'll see as they try to keep Texas Tech guessing on where that fourth or fifth guy will come from. 
three defensive linemen down, and they run a stunt off of it, and Batch with his first carry breaks free. Perfect call for that defense. They were stunning the tackle the other way, and they brought Batch to the right, and it was a beautiful call by Mike Leach, a 38-yard gain. Uh, anytime you have three defensive linemen, one of the areas that you're exposed is with uh, the ability to run, and Brent, you touched on it. A slant here to the inside, a stunt move, trying to get pressure on Harrell, and all of a sudden, here comes Baron Batch running downhill and picking up huge yards. That's one way to slow down a defense and get them to stop moving around as much as Oklahoma State wants to. Press five, now they bring six up to that line of scrimmage behind, and uh, Michael Crabtree is in the backfield. Of course, they're focused on him, and Graham's going to drop one off to him as he slips free for his first reception. First and ten Red Raiders. So they lined him up in the backfield to the left of Harrell and slipped Crabtree out. Able to disguise him, and that's the biggest difference in this offense this year is Crabtree lining up in the backfield. A little bit of razzle-dazzle or some shenanigans back there in the backfield, but the bottom line is you get an indication of what he can do in the open field for a big receiver. He can still make you miss. Set that screen. No one runs a screen any better than Texas Tech. Here is Batch. Another first and ten. When they set a running back screen or a slip screen to a wide receiver, folks, Graham Harrell and Mike Leach have the best screen package in the country. And it's a great time to call it when you have a defense that's anxious with your ears pinned back, moving around, and trying to come after Graham Harrell. That's the time that you want to try to get them out of position, get the big offensive line in front of the back, and that's what they're able to do again for another first down. And, boy, they've answered so far. They're coming right back down the field. Stephen Hamby, the center, got out on that screen and threw a fine block. Rush four, fade in zone, and they score touchdown to Edward Britton. Replay will take a look at this on that far side, too. It's a 16-yard touchdown ruling on the field, and they will want to see the relationship of the receiver's feet on this one. What a great throw by Graham Harrell, the touch, and then how about Edward Britton going over and around Perfect. with his head. He makes the catch and has the foot down for a touchdown. Unbelievable timing between Harrell and Britton. Watch this. That is a tough catch. His left foot is down. You can see the, the sand comes up. Touchdown for Texas Tech. And the one-time walk-on, Matt Williams, ties it up at seven. Wow. You like high-scoring football, folks? Shootout. You've come to the right place. 14 points already. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. Powered by Pontiac. Official performance machines of the NCAA. And Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Well, during the last couple of weeks, there have been as many as 1,700 camped out in uh, Raiderville. And uh, one student told us that uh, for the last two weeks he has gone to zero classes but he's really had good seats for these two games coming out now is Parrish Cox who was beaten on that fade pattern the defensive back out to the 22 yard line well an extreme home first two heroic families facing disabilities two different makeovers that will change their lives one inspiring event that's an all new extreme makeover home edition Sunday eight seven central right here on ABC Zach Robinson and the Cowboys settle in offensively and they go right back to Kendall Hunter Brent, the battle to watch when Oklahoma State has the ball is going to be the offensive line of Oklahoma State up against the scrappy, tenacious front seven of Texas Tech.
quick throw and reaching up to pull it down. Brandon Pettigrew, one of the most talented tight ends in the country. Folks, he's a future Sunday performer. Look at his size. Mm, and he's got great hands and he can block. Does it all. 6'5", 255 pounds. He's finally healthy. Had an ankle that caused him to miss three games. It's been huge to have him back in this lineup. Checking for Gundy's play call from the sideline. He's not changing up. Four linemen down for the Raiders. Option look. Keeps it that time for a couple of yards. And uh, Zach Robinson is an outstanding runner as well as being a good thrower. Very multi dimensional quarterback. Got a uh, penalty flag. On the offense, number 54. 15 yard penalty. First down. That is Andrew Lewis, the left guard, the junior from Joplin, Missouri. You know, Brandon, there's so many quarterbacks that are having great years in this conference that a lot of times Zach Robinson is, is put on the back burner. But you're right. His ability is very different from most of the other quarterbacks in this conference in his ability to run. He's a former wide receiver in high school, played one year as a quarterback in high school, is good enough to get an all, a scholarship offer. He runs a 4-5, so he does a lot with his feet. He's out of Littleton, Colorado. Fires a perfect strike to Pettigrew, his second reception. This is, this is an, a matchup that, that Oklahoma State has to take advantage, advantage of tonight. And it's throwing to Pettigrew, a mismatch with the size of the linebackers. Pettigrew at 6'6", can make a lot of plays. They move quickly, and it's Hunter carrying again. They have a sugar offense. They got a little bit slower when they look over to the sideline. You're never quite too sure what kind of tempo, and it certainly keeps the defense on its toes right now. Third and six, and they flex the tight end off to the left. Crowd noise, a factor. Deflected, incomplete, and batting it down is Henley. Got a hand on it, and 91 took it down. Henley makes a huge play because right behind Henley, the big tight end, Pettigrew, is coming across the middle for an easy catch and about a probably a 10 or 15 yard gain. Here's a great look at Henley going up. The athletic ability, the timing, knocks it down, and that's a first down for Oklahoma State. So Fodge trots out his first punt of the night. Eric Morris, a dynamic return man. Feels it on the 14, spins to the far sideline. Out of bounds around the 30-yard line. Tied at seven, and the Red Raiders have got it back. Well, Kirk, uh, Coach Leach telling us it was so noisy the entire game that the Red Raiders had to use a silent count last week. That's how much the crowd was into the Texas game and they're into this one too. Play fake by Harrell looking for the open receiver incomplete it'll be second down and 10 and so far that was Price with the uh, coverage and it has been a wild Saturday as you might expect Alabama needed overtime scored a touchdown to beat LSU Red Raiders playing right now Penn State upset at Iowa City today, Texas with a big win and Florida underway tonight. So Nittany Lions will take a huge drop and the battle continues on the road to Miami in the BCS championship. Second down and 10 that inside shuttle pass here is Woods picked up a blocker and made a first down. Well, you know, when the Red Raiders do this, it's just like a running play. Right? It is like a running play, and the defense, again, is just getting upfield. The linebackers come. One of the linebackers gets in position there, and he's right there. Lemon's there to make the play, but the ability of Woods to shake that tackle allows him to get upfield there. That is Mike Gundy, the head coach. This is the first time I've ever seen a head coach who is so involved with his offense actually move back to a trunk. 
talk to his assistants upstairs. He will not do that late in the first half or late in the game, he told us. Then he has to be out there to manage timeouts. Harrell now near side and Crabtree snaring it complete. You almost just don't want to even talk. You just want to sit back and watch Graham Harrell when it comes to the timing with his receivers. And, of course, with Crabtree, the ball is thrown exactly where it has to be. How many times do you think six and five have worked on all their routes, but especially that one perfect throw again by Graham Harrell? Now the running play. And a good run on first down. Lemon making the stop again. Let's go to Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Brent, let's get a check of our primetime pulse. Traditional rivals added on Chestnut Hill, Notre Dame, and Boston College, each trying to get bowl eligible tonight. Meanwhile, Florida can set the date with Alabama in the SEC championship game with a win tonight. Tim Tebow has accounted for three touchdowns already. Yes, Tebow's back in that Heisman race, man. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And a cut by Batch, he's running very well here tonight. What makes this Texas Tech offense nearly unstoppable is the combination of that big veteran offensive line and their versatility. They're great in pass protection, but they also like to explode off the line and help these back backs pick up yardage. over to the up fumble recovered by the Red Raiders jumping on it I believe was Detron Lewis on the loose ball that's who had it number 17 and again the spacing of this Texas Tech offense makes it so hard whether you're sitting in zone or, or playing man they find the holes this time Morris makes the catch great play by Lemon to attack the football and how about Lewis right place at the right time to keep the possession here for Texas Tech. Lemon, the middle linebacker from Houston, a junior, playing Previous very play well defensively. And of course, they're going to see whether he caught the pass. And it was a legitimate fumble, so they will uh, they will check it upstairs. I think the only thing to check is to see if he was bobbling the ball as he took possession of it. Looks, looks like he has it long enough, and it's a possession to me. I agree with you, Greg. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any reason to overturn that off of what we saw. Indisputable evidence has to be uh, offered in that situation. It looked to me like uh, they'll confirm the play on the field, but we should let them make the decision. Yeah. Watching this offense, Brent, wouldn't you agree? It just seems like Mike Leach is one step ahead of whatever adjustments you're trying to make to try to slow him down. And, and, and right now what we're seeing from Oklahoma State is they're mixing up their looks. They're moving and stunning their defensive line. They're blitzing their linebackers. They're playing some man, playing some zone. That was the plan coming in, just show them everything and try to hope that that can get Graham Harrell out of sync. And so far, Graham Harrell is having a pretty good night. Eight of nine and looks a lot like he did last week. You play man and they have man beaters with crossing routes. After review, fans. the receiver never had control of the oh. ball. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down and one on the 33-yard line. Well, we don't happen to agree with that, but uh, right. they get the final word. That's right. I thought when you turn up field, you take a step like that, you got control. <laughs> and that the uh, defensive player made a beautiful play in slapping it clean. And you know what Leach is going to do here. Never a doubt. He's got both his running backs in there. Woods and Batch. And he's got a quarterback who's like a coach on a field going right straight ahead for the first down. Just put himself right up under center. Phil Hamby is snapping the ball and they went in right for the first down. Fourth and one and you don't cover up the center. Look, look at the huge gap. I mean Hamby the center he gets down on all fours. He has nobody to block. There's nobody there. I don't think anybody even had to know no. the play except Hamby and Harold. That was it. He, he may have just called a playoff walked hey, up. Absolutely. Said, Harold saw it. that yeah. there was nobody there Kirk. I totally agree with you. First down and ten. 
throwing the slant that time to Swindoll. It's, it's the balance of this offense. Three receivers to the top. This isn't a huge game, but it's just they're putting something in your mind. Three receivers to the top. Crabtree, one of them, put Swindle down at the bottom. It's a little slant, but it's just throwing it to the backside. It makes you respect the entire field when you defend this offense. Second and four. Harold buys a little bit of time and then throws out of bounds. You have to be impressed, Kurt, as you come and watch Graham Harold. This is back-to-back -back weeks for us. And when we talk to Leach, you say, you know, as you watch him, he always seems to have an idea. And Leach says, you bet, you know, coach's son uh, came here with an understanding of football. There's a tremendous relationship between this coach and Graham Harrell as his quarterback. And being in his third year as a starting quarterback and in this system, he is, again, one of these quarterbacks who is a coach, an offensive coordinator out there playing quarterback. Beautiful fake. Crabtree was covered up. Now he drops it off the other side. And here comes Woods, first down, sprinting free. Inside the five. What a great read by Graham Harrell. They sent Crabtree through the formation. He wheeled in that direction, saw that he was covered, and went back for 22 yards. Well, he, he not only wheels, he actually takes a step in a pump fake. He recognized the coverage, dumps it off to Woods, and this is the most underrated part of this offense, checking it down to Woods, and instead of just picking up five or six yards, he makes a linebacker miss. He shows how strong he is as a runner and almost gets it into the end zone. Now batches alongside Harold. Touchdown, Eric Morris. And the gunfight at the Jones is underway. If you're going to play man coverage against this offense, you better keep your fingers crossed. You got no shot. Williams has the extra point. Texas Tech leads it for the first time tonight. If you just joined us, Oklahoma State scored first, but back come the Red Raiders. There's the Mighty Might. Coach nicknamed Morris the Elf, and he has a whole <laughs> Elf package, and we'll show you how good he can slip out here, Kirk. Uh, he is so quick, and when he is matched up one-on-one -on -one against a safety, it's, it's, it's just not fair. Ricky Price is a great player. Look at Ricky Price's eyes. Ricky Price is looking back at the quarterback. He has no idea where Morris is, making it very easy. You see Morris matched up against a safety one-on-one. -on -one. He, he gonna, Graham Harrell's going to take that every single time. Corona handles the kickoffs. He left foots it down to the two-yard line where Cox the second return, and he's going to be stopped at the 23-yard line. Well, we got a couple of races left, and Jimmy Johnson is he closing in on a three-peat? He's got to hold off Carl Edwards, you know, in a quest for his third straight. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues. Phoenix, Sunday, ABC. Big Carl's the fighter, right? Yes, sir. I'm going with he's Carl. been a bad one. I'll he's take he's Jimmy won. for a dinner. He's won the last two. Jimmy for a dinner. Are you got I'm fine. He's on fire the last couple of weeks. 3.30 now for Zach. Zone read play and 100 pounds away on first down. Boy, you know, when you look at Kirkman, I, excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you know, when you look at him, I think of a guy back in the late 80s about the same size by the name of Barry Sanders. Now, obviously, he doesn't have the same cutting ability, or at least we haven't seen it, but he's just about the same size when you look at him down there. 
Pettigrew didn't hang on that time, and that was pretty good defense that time. He's objecting to how well Bird played him. Look at the words being exchanged now between Pettigrew and Bird. He, Bird did not back away. Well, Bird's been challenged by Ruffin McNeil all week that, hey, you're going to have to match up it from time to time one on one with Pettigrew. He's a first rounder. You sure you can take that? And there's Ruffin McNeil. Coach you Ruff. sure you can handle that? You can see Bird's tired of hearing about the first rounder. He wants it. Remember, after the shootout a year ago in Stillwater, that's when Ruffin became the defensive coordinator. They changed defensive coordinators following that shootout up there last year. Des Bryant has not been involved in this offense. Timeout. Timeout is called. The, the time was running down, and so the Cowboys took a timeout. But we'll take a break. Crowd got to him a little bit that time, didn't they? Well, we talked about uh, Ruffin when he took over, and you can see uh, against Oklahoma State what happened that night, and since then, how uh, dramatically the difference that the defense has turned in. And there's the man who, more of an emotional leader, simplified things when he took over. Zach Robinson on the move, and that's incomplete. There's a player, Colby Whitlock, who did a fabulous job last week with that defensive line. I just, I just circled Des Bryant before they went to a timeout, thinking they might try to get it to him. Texas Tech is thinking the same thing. Nickerson staying with him to the outside. There's a linebacker, and at the last minute, Darcel McBath comes in, completely locked in on any inside move. And as soon as Bryant went to the inside, McBath is there to come up on the ball and knock it away. On the move. And it gets by Morris. He should have fielded it. Let it bounce down inside the 10 and then inside the 5. And he's upset with himself. He got to field that punt. He knows it. That's a 71-yard punt after a 3 and out. Mike Leach says, all right, no problem. We're ready for a 97-yard drive here. <laughs> better for the stats 10 of 13 already and two touchdown passes look so at, we'll see what the mad science hey that's the biggest play playlist i've ever seen look at his huh? play i will ask him on the field i said can i see your play chart he pulls it out of his well, that's one of these pockets where the heck is that thing <laughs> flips it to me there it is what do you think i'm like oh my gosh compare that to the size of guys like well dick vermeil when they showed <laughs> right. up for a game in underneath to Morris. Create space with the receivers, create space with the scheme, clear out a zone, have another receiver come into it. If they play man, they have, they have the ability with all these receivers to break away from man coverage. Unless you can get to Graham Harrell, you really cannot stop this offense. Stands in the end zone, delivers, and dropped by Crabtree. You know, and that brings back memories a year ago, Kirk, when Texas Tech had a chance to win yeah. that game up at Stillwater, and Crabtree dropped one in the end zone. A rare sight as you go back and, and you think about this shootout right over the middle. Touchdown. And Crabtree oh. cannot hang on. And now here tonight, he has dropped the first one here comes third down now third and six fires over the middle first down it's more slipping free they can't find the elf they don't see the elf when he slips out there right, they're trying to play man here on third down and it's ricky price again trying to stay with this receiver eric morris and he just cannot do it there is such an advantage there with the quickness with morris matched up against the safety and again ricky price is the leader of this defense he is an exceptional player but the quickness is such an advantage with morris that he just can't stay up with him rush four and he'll drop it off to the safety valve 
That's Batch, the running back, could not find an open receiver downfield. You know, as you watch Graham Harrell, I mean, it's unbelievable. He had a lot of pressure around him. He didn't panic. He just brought down his progression to the safety valve and dropped it off to the left hand. Folks, this guy is a was whole he, lot better than people thought he was. Well, see, wow. he's, he's not a system guy. If you've watched him these last two weeks, one thing you have to have an appreciation for is his patience in the pocket. I mean, he sits back there calmly making his reads, sometimes downfield, sometimes checks it down. He knew he had Crabtree. He set that screen coming back to the middle and got his ace involved again. Crabtree having an ability to get back after the, the drop, just trying anything to get his hands on the football. Love his competitive spirit, love how physical he is, willing to go in there right into the middle of that defense and take those linebackers on. Cowboys back away. Rush four. Releases it in time. And eight more yards with Morris. Morris is off to a big start here tonight. Uh, he's upset right now trying to get the referee's attention because he felt after he threw the ball, he got clubbed to the, to the head. Let's take a look here. Oh, no boy. Question. you got to throw oh, the flag on wow. that. Oh, no referee can let that go. you yeah, got to be kidding me. That's wow. brutal. That's their number one job, protect the quarterbacks. Come on, man. Lubbock, Texas on a Saturday night. 21 points on the board as we start the second quarter now with a second down and a short for the Red Raiders. It's their fourth possession of the night. They fumbled on their first possession and then in their next two, touchdown both times. Need one yard, Batch battling toward the First down indicator. Texas Tech owning the first quarter. Every single stat that you can imagine. The biggest to me is they, they seems like they had the ball the, the whole first quarter. Almost 11 minutes at a 15. They're holding on to the football. Those man jumped. Free shot. Here comes Woods. A free play for the Red Raiders. Nose guard was offside. Offside on a defense number 96. Five yard penalty. First down. Chatham, the man who jumped. Michael Crabtree with an early lead against Des Bryant in the showdown of uh, two of the finest receivers in the country this year. Keeping three down linemen. Rushing four. Complete. Lewis. Is this play this, this play right here will show you exactly what makes the offense. Crosser right here, crosser here. Look at the linebackers right here, how they get way to the outside. When you get to the outside, somebody inevitably is going to end up right in the middle of the defense. And this time, it's Lewis, the other first down. They're going to stretch you vertically, they're going to stretch you horizontally, and then they're going to pick on you right in the middle. Showing pressure after that 17-yard game. Jailbreak. And they completed to the 30-yard line. He just stood tough and delivered that pass on the money to Edward Britton. And let's take a look at the Pacific Life game summary the first time tonight. And it just shows you how Crabtree has three receptions for 36. And Herbie Bryant, a shutout so far. And only one time that they really even looked to get the football to him. And that was the last time Oklahoma State had the ball on third down. And you know Crabtree, it's a matter of time till he explodes as this game goes on.
Trying to get there with four. One breaks free. Harrell slips it. And then throws it out of bounds. So he slips the defender who broke free. Well, when you get the pressure, when you finally are able to get to him, you've got to be able to bring him down. And Andre Sexton's coming. He gets to him. Now you, you, you only get so many chances for a huge loss. And when you have the opportunity, you've got to secure the quarterback. But give Graham Harrell credit. Gets away from him, shows some strength, and then just throws the ball away. Third and five. Throws for the first and ten to Morris. What a surprise. Eric Morris again on a third down. Gets man-to-man -man coverage. They bring him across the middle yet again. And who's on him? Ricky Price. Morris is outshining both of our stud receivers. That's a half dozen catches already for him. Seems like they're all on third down. Man coverage. Is he shaking up a little bit on that play? Pump fake again. Set that screen. Back to the short side. Batch. Across the 15-yard line, just shy of that first down indicator. Sexton making the tackle. Another perfect call. A huge play by Sexton to come from the backside and, and end up chasing this down. Good recognition. You see, if Sexton's not there, the Batches walks into the end zone. You have to chase it from inside out. And very, very, Oklahoma State's very fortunate that Sexton has the speed that he has, and he brings down Batch from behind. Well set up again. He was walking into the end zone. Second down and one. Here's Woods. And he's down to the nine yard line and Price makes the stop as we come to the top of the hour. Eight o'clock in Lubbock Texas Central Time. Saturday Night Football ESPN on ABC with Kirk Herbstreit and Lisa Salters. I'm Brad Musburger. Nice to have you along with us again tonight. This is the Action Conference of the year, the Big 12. Comes the blitz. Touchdown, Red Raiders. Crabtree. Can't get to number six. Cowboys are trying, but they cannot get there. Last week it was this end zone that he had the play of the year. This time it's the strength of the upper body and the hands. Brings the ball in and then carries Lacey into the end zone. The top corner from Oklahoma State. Look how soft the hands are and yet so powerful. Carries those Cowboys into the end zone. 97 yards, 14 plays. Williams adds the extra point. Three consecutive touchdowns after a fumble on their first possession. Red Raiders rolling. So three touchdown passes already for Graham Harrell. Michael Crabtree just snared the third one. Corona to kick it off. Another beautiful kickoff and... Uh, Lisa Salter, so what kind of a youngster was Michael Crabtree? Well, well, Brent, Kirk was talking about how physical Michael Crabtree is, and I was talking to his father, Mike Crabtree Sr., and he says he's been that way since he was a little kid, even when he was playing peewee football, always bigger and stronger than the other kids had to play up. I asked him, when did you know your son was going to be a receiver? He said, in junior high, I knew he had good hands, but one day I intentionally tried to overthrow him. He just ran and caught up with it, and I thought, whoa, he's a receiver. Remember now, Texas looked at him as a defensive back, as a safety, because he had been a quarterback in high school. And Mike Leach loved him right away as a wide receiver. And so they hooked up. Let's check in with Matt Weiner in New York. Matt. Hi, Brent. Here's a nominee for the Pontiac game-changing performance. Alabama and LSU in Baton Rouge. Rashad Johnson's overtime interception, his third of the day, set up the Crimson Tide's game-winning touchdown by John Parker Wilson and kept Bama unblemished. Vote for your Pontiac game-changing performance starting tomorrow morning at 9 on ESPN.com. And Matt, of course, Alabama 
will stay number one in the BCS rankings, but number three, Penn State, upset today, and complete Pettigrew gets back into things there at the 40-yard line. Big number 87, and, you know, Kirk, I've got to ask you a question. Are they not looking toward Des Bryant, well, or are I, the Red Raiders doing a good job defensively? I was here? just about to talk about how Texas Tech, a lot like last week, keeping their two safeties back is preventing Des Bryant from getting involved right now. And not only that, what's interesting is when you have two safeties back like this, you have to control things in here and run the football. Play fake by Zach Robinson. He looked that time. And uh, so he has to scamper out Duncan, who played so well against Texas, the middle linebacker making the stop. He looked off in Dez's direction. Dez was lined up wide right on that time. I, right now, if I'm Ruffin McNeil and I'm looking at trying to stop this offense, I came into it thinking, hey, can I stop Dez Bryant, keep the safeties back, and at the same time stop Kendall Hunter by just winning the battle at the line of scrimmage? Jamar Walkirk did a great job that yeah. time on that replay. He was all over him, step for step step here comes hunter so they run for the first down breaks free and he is upended as he comes down that far sideline kendall hunter so there is the running play and the running game kirk so this is well, this is what gets oklahoma state going nice seal block by pettigrew and there's the difference in pettigrew right there you see that big block by him he's not just catching the football So we'll get the penalty explained. But the running game sets up their passing game. Then you can get Des Bryant, and then you can make big plays. But if they can't win that battle up front against Texas Tech. League of substitution on the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Coach Ruff not happy about that. Yes, sir. Des Bryant goes off to the left side of the formation. Crowd will climb back in here against Zach Robinson and the Cowboys. So there's a safety back there behind Des Bryant. Here's that read option. They've gone to a backup running back, and that is Toasted. Keith Toasted with his first carry of the night. Toasted. It's so rare in today's day and age in college football to see defenses effectively stop running games by just using their front. Almost every defense gets that extra safety up into the line of scrimmage, and then you can throw the football. But if there's no reason to walk them up, then you can sit back and defend the pass and win the battle up front with just playing great defense. Wall is matched against Des Bryant again to the right. You see number one. Turn and check the signal over there. There's Wall. Safety shades over in that direction. They run away from it with Hunter for the first down. Into the red zone. Running back into the boundary. It's the second time here in the last few plays that they've done that. And seeing something, what I think they're seeing is that Pettigrew and the big left tackle, Okong, controlling that side. Move in a hurry this time. And they, Pettigrew breaks the first tackle and almost got to the first down marker. Strong run by number 87, Brandon Pettigrew, a senior from Tyler, Texas. They start to run the football. That's when you see Zach Robinson at his best. The play action pass. You can move the launching points, move him to the outside, left to right. He can make so many things happen, but it's all predicated upon Kendall Hunter and the running game of the Cowboys. Crowd making it tough for Zach. Hunter hit first, and Kobe stays with it. Big number 93, Kobe Whitlock, who is out of the state of Oklahoma. Noble, Oklahoma, comes up and watch his penetration here. He gets penetration. He goes right through the best offensive lineman, has his back. He's throwing his legs, his back, his, his rear end, anything he can find into the way of Kendall Hunter to slow him down. And I'll tell you, this defensive line is as scrappy a bunch as you'll see in the United States. These guys get after it. 
Texas Tech slips across that border. They're not afraid to go up into Oklahoma and recruit against the Cowboys and the Oklahoma Sooners and they've got a couple of good players out of that state. And there again battling was Tostin. Coach Gundy looks at his play chart working closely as we've seen with the offense and not so closely with the defense. He knows he needs touchdowns. In the battle between Oklahoma State's offensive line and the Texas Tech front. That to me is going to tell the storyline of this whole football game. Hey, hey, you got the play I, there, Brent? You got it? I've got that, huh? Look at this. <laughs> when the crowd is noisy, we play a little Jeopardy there with the play call over there. <laughs> Throw back in underneath to Hunter, and the defense was there. That's Jamar Wall, the corner coming up. And again, uh, I'm so impressed with the fact that Des Bryant has not been able to get free and he is not hooked up here with Zach Robbins. Two plays that Oklahoma State likes when they throw the football. Down here, finding Pettigrew in a mismatch against a linebacker, or Des Bryant on a fade against a smaller corner. He's at the bottom now, lined up against Jamar Wall. Hunter the running back again. Brandon Williams from Fort Worth played such a fine game also against the Longhorns making the stop and now you see an exchange of running backs toasting. Third and goal. Do they want a Y7 or an E4? <laughs> How about just find Dez? Not even looking there, coming back, and the receiver went down. That's interference. Going down was Jeremy Broadway that time. And Nickerson, who came into this game a little nicked, able to play a little bit, and uh, there was obvious interference in the end zone. Pass interference on the defense number 10. Ball will be placed at the two yard line. Automatic. First down. If Ruffin McNeil, the defensive coordinator, is determined to keep two defensive backs on Des Bryant this entire game, other players are going to have to make plays. Gives this is on Charbonnet. You can see that he picked him off the safety, yep. giving the corner help. And so here's now first and goal. Toasten. He's the deep eye. Bryant is off to the left. Pettigrew is lined up tight right. Toastin bangs into the end zone. It's early in this football game, still in the first half, but the way this game was going, huge drive by Oklahoma State. One of the first times we've seen the Cowboys on the interior open up a seam for one of their backs to be able to squeeze through. And that time, the more powerful Toasting gets in there for the touchdown. Huge drive, 12 plays for Oklahoma State. Bailey tacks on the extra point. So touchdown toasted his ninth rushing touchdown of the season. It's back to a seven point game. Saturday night football on ABC brought to you by Southwest Airlines low fares no hidden fees Chevy an American Revolution and Aflac. Ask about it at work. Ashley Hartzog throws that saddle up on Mass Rider and ready to lead him out here in Lubbock, Texas. Go Texas Tech! Let's go Red Raiders! Red Raiders. Well, Herbie, here's your Aflac question tonight now. I'm trying to... I'm fine now. Here we go. Aside from Mike Leach, there are five other coaches who did not play college football. Name the other five. I make you a favor to get almost all of them. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, man. 
Went to BYU, went down to Pepperdine, got a law degree, has coached football in as far away places as Finland. He was an offensive coordinator for Bob Stoops up in Oklahoma, but he never played. Here comes the return now by Lewis Detron. And the Red Raiders have scored the last three times they've handled the ball. Will they do it again? Come on back and find out. Herbie, that might have been my favorite commercial break ever with you. <laughs> You're struggling with these guys who didn't uh, play. Come on, give me a couple of them right now. Charlie Weiss. Yeah, you got him, right. He's uh, one of the five. Mark Mangino. Won. Mark Mangino. Uh, got two. Uh, those, were the, those were the two easy ones. David Cutcliffe. Yes, good one. That was good a good one. one. That's a good one. All right, All right. I got to come up with two more. You got two more right after this snap. How, we'll how, how, how soon is the oh, duck coming back? <laughs> the duck is coming right back now. <laughs> We've got 407. Red Raiders lead the Cowboys 21 14. There's that handoff to Batch. Okay, Irby. I'm going to guess. Here we go. No, I, go ahead. George O'Leary, I'm guessing. Very good one. That's, Perfect. That's all I have Perfect. for you. Perfect. Here you are. Here comes the one you didn't know. David Cutcliffe. Yeah. You yeah. got him. He's now the head coach at Duke. Oh, Paul Johnson's wow. the one you didn't know. Okay. And I would not have gotten that one no. either. Okay. Big Mark Mangino up in Kansas. George O'Leary down there in Central Florida. And uh, Johnny Weiss, of course, the uh, head coach of the Fighting Irish are playing Boston College tonight. And guys in the studio at halftime, they'll have that along. Dropped off over the middle, another first and ten, and that is Woods, the running back. And uh, that question compliments to George Hill, and I thought it was an outstanding oh, question. It is a really good question. But Detron Lewis going deep here to take the linebackers, and you just bring the running back underneath. See the linebackers get back, they're taking away Lewis. Another simple throw, simple read, accurate throw. It's very, very tough to stop. Quick off to the side, the Cowboys read that perfectly. Leon caught his second ball. Let's check in on Matt Weiner in New York for an update, Matt. Fred Sports Center right now is powered by Vizio. Only five unbeatens left out there. Number three, Penn State, no longer among them. Daniel Murray's 31-yard field goal sent the Nittany Lions home with their first loss. Meanwhile, one loss USC leads Cal 10-3 in Los Angeles. Mark Sanchez with a touchdown pass early on. You know, Matt and Kurt, I think I read that USC had given up only 13 points in the second half all season. And can that be true as uh, Crabtree snares another one going out of bounds. And wouldn't that be something to watch the USC defense against the Crabtree and Graham Harrell offense? Uh, one thing you might not want to do when you play man coverage yes. is five and black is a good ball player. You might, you <laughs> you might want to keep tabs on five. When you play man coverage, not only one, but two. That was man under, and there's some confusion in the Oklahoma State secondary. Crabtree all alone, and Carroll, of course, finds him. Play fake is a beauty by Harrell. Couldn't get an open receiver. Now he's going to throw back across the body. Tough throw complete to the 20-yard line. This is my favorite thing about Graham Harrell and Texas Tech. I was blown away last week with Graham Harrell's ability to scramble and his receiver's ability to work with him. He's scrambling to eventually make a throw. He's getting to the sideline because he knows that either Lewis or Crabtree or one of them will work back to him. This time it's Detron Lewis. They never give up on plays and they continue to stay in alignment perfectly with Graham Harrell. Seconds, a fumble by Harrell on the snap, picks it back up, stands tall and deflected that time by Lemon, that middle linebacker who's been very active. You're only going to have so many opportunities where Texas Tech makes a rare mistake. He fumbles the ball, still has time, makes a poor decision, a rare poor decision by Graham Harrell. And Brent, you said it, Lemon's been active because they're attacking the middle of this defense. Would have been a tough catch, but when you get your hands on the ball against this guy, you've got to be able to make the play. Second and ten. Crabtree just grabs it out of the air. First and goal. They brought the blitz and they played man coverage. The safety is late to get over there. And again, it comes down to being strong and physical. Look how, look how strong his hands are. 
goes up, makes the catch. Lacey, a very good cover. I, th I thought the ball might come out. Lacey's right there, but Crabtree just takes care of that football and gets it inside the five-yard line. That ankle looks like it might be bothering him. Showdown with Des Bryant's gone all one way here tonight. Final minute. Whistle. They're all frustrated because they had exactly what they wanted. Prior to the snap. There was a timeout was called prior to the snap. And he thought he had a touchdown. He didn't want that timeout call. No. <laughs> Coach, I had it. Mad scientist said, I want a little camera time. Come on, bring him on over here. We'll talk about this for a little bit. <laughs> Number 82 there is Adam James. And coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report, we'll hear from his daddy. That's right, Craig James, along with John Saunders, Doug Flutie. And we'll have highlights of all the day's big games. Number one, Alabama survives in overtime. He's a freshman as well. He is a freshman. And Mike Leach says he may have the best hands on this team before the game telling me that. There's the handoff touchdown. Four touchdowns in a row after that fumble. So Shannon Woods, the senior from McKinney, Texas, takes it in. That's the play that Graham Harrell wanted. Oklahoma State pinching in, realizing that a run might be coming, and Woods just goes to the outside. If they keep it up, do they hey. jump Alabama in the BCS standings? Bama wins in dramatic fashion, but in overtime, Kirk. I think... Tonight, after what happened last week, they're confirming that they are one of the top teams, if not the top team in the country. I think more people, if this stays up, they got to be more impressed with what they're doing this week than what they did last week. Watch the defense pinch to the inside. Woods, so simple. I mean, Woods is a complete back. I mean, there's so many players on this offense that you get caught up and you think about Harrell and Crabtree and... Lewis and just everybody. We've seen Morris make plays. The backs that they have, and we've talked the last two weeks so much about it, Brent. The backs with Woods and Batch give this offense such diversity and such a good look. They're now two-dimensional. Instead of just Mike Leach drawing up right. pass plays, it, it, it makes it through this part of the season almost impossible to stop these guys. They used to have some good running backs here. Donnie Anderson. Yeah. Before your time. Yeah, that, let's go a little bit. I was thinking Byron Hansborn. You're going Donnie Anderson. On. I saw Donnie last week. He was oh. uh, he was here at the game. Of course, he's a Hall of Famer. Went on to a great career with the Green Bay Packers. And he was a what tough. Years? What years? It was a tough hombre back in there. <laughs> back in the days of Vince Lombardi, when men were men. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Fielded by Cox. And Cox returns it to the 25. Well, speaking to those fellas, you know, Vince would have liked the fire of Mike Singletary, and he'll lead his San Francisco 49ers to battle the high-powered offense of the Arizona Cardinals, looking for their first Division title in 33 years. Kurt Warner having a big year for the Cardinals. That'll be kind of fun on Monday Night Football. I don't know if the Niners can stick with him, but uh, Singletary will drive him in that direction. That's yeah, no for doubt sure. about that. I told you about the, the new team, yeah, Des Bryant tonight. The big games tonight, this year, Missouri and Texas, he's been handled. He really wanted to put on a display tonight, and so far in this first half, He's not been able to get on track. A lot of it has to do with the way Texas Tech is defending this offense. Got him. Going deep to him. Got him and knocked free. Terrific help over the top from a safety. Coming in to help on the play as Hines is there. Now what? Here's what I saw. Gone. Right by McBath. He set him up perfectly. The ball is there. And the difference is he gets by McBath. But it's actually Nickerson coming over and making the play. I, I beg your pardon, Hines, as you said, Brent. Hines the safety. He gets behind McBath. He feels Hines coming, unable to hold on to the football. But they, they set it up perfectly that time. That's one way to beat double coverage. A little pump fake and get behind the safety. Hand off. And they came back with Toaston. Time continues to run. They'll use a timeout here, probably, and stop it. 
with uh, 24 seconds to go. Coach Gundy would uh, would love to shake Bryant loose if we can. And uh, you know, maybe we've seen it too often. But but I want to go back to his post game explosion of a year ago. Let, let's listen to Coach Gundy because I want to make a point about this afterwards. Attacking an amateur athlete for doing everything right. And then you want to write articles about guys that don't do things right and downgrade them, the ones that do make plays. Are you kidding me? Where are we at in society today? Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. I'm not a, I'm not a kid. Write something about me. He was defending Bobby Reed, who had lost his job as quarterback, Zach Robinson, taking over that afternoon. But you know one thing, Kirk, since that explosion, and we've all been amused by it, we see it over, since that explosion, this football team has played pretty well together now. People can make fun of it. They can say whatever they want. If you're in the locker room and a coach goes out there and does that, he's got your back. I don't care what happened. All the people that want to make fun of him, I like it. Toast it again. Looks like he's going to be content to go on into the uh, locker room here, trailing 28-14. I, I, I think he's still going to give it a shot. He has one timeout. The clock stops with a first down. Going to fire the ball here. It, with the receivers that he has, he's probably thinking, you know, if we can get one big play. I was looking before, during the week here. It is kicker. Dan Bailey's not really had an opportunity. He's missed two from 50 plus. This is, not, is, a, you know, this is not a game for field goal no, kickers. But if, okay. If you can get any any points. I, I try to go possession. back to Des Bryant if I can. Play. If I can shake him loose on that move again. He's on There's the board. Des. He's on the board. And that'll stop the clock momentarily at seven seconds, remember, with the first down. Here's one way to get him the football is you clear out another receiver downfield to occupy the safety. And now all of a sudden, Oklahoma State giving Texas Tech some of their own medicine. And again, Zach Robinson just fires it into the ground to kill the clock. All timeout. That's their second one of the first half. 30 second timeout. Timer, please reset the game clock to seven seconds. Probably a pretty good timeout. Let yep. the defense regroup. Yep. Take a breath. You know. What a first half for Texas Tech's defense. Last Absolutely. week we sat right up here and watched them play a great first half against Texas. Texas made some adjustments, got right back into the football game, eventually took the lead. And the reason is they started to control the line of scrimmage in the second half. If I'm Mike Gundy, I'm going in at halftime talking to my offensive line saying, guys, with their two safeties back, we have to control the line of scrimmage and we have to run the ball with Hunter and Toasted. They have to do that even though they're down 14. Because that sets everything and then you can get the ball to Pettigrew and to Des Bryant. Des Bryant's for Oklahoma State to win this game, eventually Des Bryant's going to have to become a big factor in the football game. Pettigrew is one of the four wide. Got Bryant, couldn't hang on. Would have been a tough catch. That one with three seconds left here on the first half. I think here comes the Hail Mary. Des Bryant's strength is going up and getting the football. At 6-2, he can elevate as well as anybody. The I've safety this year. Here. They're back. They're they back better be back. 10 there. and 15 yard line. Let's put it up in the air and see if number one can go up and out jump everybody. Rush three. Last play of the half. In the zone. Does up in the air. Grabbed incomplete. I think he had his hands on that football. That's why he's, it wasn't as if it was being bobbled. Look at this. He goes right into the middle of the tra traffic. He's got the football. 
just unable to hold on to it as he comes down. Pettigrew may have interfered with him down there. And you know what our man Doug Flutie is saying? Oh. Where is Gerard Phelan <laughs> as we go down below to Lisa Salters? Lisa? Yeah, Brent, Mike, and I are just looking at that replay. What did you think of that? Well, I didn't see it until I just saw the replay, but it was close, came up with it. We've got to do a better job on defense of, of keeping them from knowing exactly what we're in and tackle better defensively. And then offense, we've just got to continue on. Now your star wide receiver, Des Bryant, a slow first half for him, just one reception. What are they doing to slow him down? They're playing two people over the top of him. We get a lot of that. So that's why we're able to run the ball. All right, thanks a lot. You bet. Thank you, Lisa. So stay tuned for the Capital One Halftime Report. Big John will be along with Craig and Doug Flutie right after this. West Texas kind of music on a Saturday night football game on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines with Kirk Herbstreit and Lisa Salters. I'm Brett Musburger. Glad to have you back with us. And Kirk, uh, when we go through our Southwest Airlines playbook for Graham Harrell, I mean, it's been something watching them tonight. Again, he has a half that most quarterbacks would say that's a pretty good football game. 25 of 31 for 262 yards, three touchdowns and one pick. And he got had a turnover in the first possession, but after that, he was was able to make plays settled in the offensive line of course gives him time here's the patience to check down the Shannon Woods Woods shows what he can do in the open field again it's the timing between Graham Harrell and his favorite target Michael Crabtree the strong hands Crabtree had a pretty good first half I'm sure we'll see a lot more of him here in the second half six catches for 80 yards in that first half now Kirk Oklahoma State will handle the ball here to start the second half they're gonna bring it out from the end zone Cox again returns to the 20 and uh, the big story the Pacific Life game summary and it has certainly been one sided Michael Crabtree with seven times he's been throwing the ball I dropped one but six receptions and Des Bryant's the only wide receiver who's caught a ball for the Cowboys yeah one catch 16 yards I'm, I'm going to go back to my original point about Oklahoma State and if they want to get Des Bryant involved in this game they've got to be able to control that line of scrimmage where the scrappy Texas Tech front was able to win that battle and run the football to set up their play action pass game Coming back to Pettigrew, the tight end. And let's go down below to Lisa Salters. Lisa. Well, Brent, I spoke to Des Bryant briefly as he was coming out of the locker room, and I said, what are they doing to you? And he just kind of shook his head and said, they're doubling me. It's just that simple double coverage. I said, what do you do to get break three? And he said, well, I'm just going to have to fight my way through it. But is it that simple, Brent? No, I'm yeah. not so sure. I mean, One that... time he got behind it on the pump right. fake. But here's the safety in a corner. Well, here, right here, the safety in the corner, both on Des Bryant. So they're going to come back with those safeties deep with Kendall Hunter's first carry here of the uh, second half, and Whitlock makes the stop for the Red Raiders. Wait, when you hear you heard Lisa just talk about, well, they're double teaming me. You heard Mike Gundy walking off, talking with Lisa, saying, well, they have a safety over top. As Des Bryant comes down here to the bottom of the screen, you're going to see a defensive back up close at the line, and you'll see a safety back here. Basically, both assigned to make sure number one is not a factor in the game and make somebody else have to make a play. So Robinson drops it off underneath for a first down using Hunter as a safety valve out of the backfield. And when teams do that, that's a great strategy if all you have is one weapon. What makes Oklahoma State's offense so tough to defend, and they call it their four aces, is Zach Robinson's ability to run and throw, Pettigrew, the tight end's ability to make plays, and then, of course, their ability to run the football with Hunter and Toasty. Gundy throws on first down, and Pettigrew fumbles it. And the Red Raiders may have given it back. Let's see, there's a scrum on the field, and they've got it. Red Raiders grab it. Instant replay will make sure that he had possession. McBath, the safety, jumping on the loose football. McBath also involved in trying to bring the big tight end down, and he comes in from behind, and I think tries to bat this ball away right there. He makes the contact from behind, coming from the Pettigrew's right side. Big gain, getting upfield, boom, the big hit by McBath, and it's a loose ball. There's about 10 black jerseys there to try to pounce on it. There was no question that he had possession, turned upfield, fumbled on the hit. 
And the Red Raiders come with Baron Batch as their starting running back. He's out of Midland, Texas. Lemon making the stop and uh, Pettigrew over there, and uh, he knows he should have held on to it. There's no question about that. And the reason he's down on himself, Zach Robinson trying to help him out there, is every possession against Texas Tech matters because it's so hard to stop them, let alone when you're down 14. You can't make mistakes. Second and seven, a three-man rush. On the sideline. And they're waving it off. You know, the backside always comes into play. Graham Harrell not even having the ability to set his feet and throw. Oh boy, it was just a matter of the left foot was in, but the right foot came down out of bounds. Yeah, Britain, I think almost simultaneously, wasn't yep. it? And the official sure right like there with a pretty good look at that. Rare third down here for Texas Tech. Comes the blitz. Don't get there. And it's a first down as they swindle. Graham Harrell just reads coverage and pressure so well. Calm in the pocket. Trust that offensive line. We've got man-to-man -man coverage. This time, Quentin Moore matched up with Swindle. Not only the patience and how poised he is in the pocket, recognition of the matchup that is his most favorable matchup. He's been picking on these safeties all night in man coverage. Woods slips free to the 30-yard line. When we began the game on the first drive, Texas Tech fumbled, and that resulted in a touchdown. But look at what they've done since. Four consecutive possessions in the first half and four touchdowns. Wow. Good thing they can't drive the length of the field. <laughs> My gosh, look at that. Talk about consistency. Deflected. Back to him, I believe, and then he threw to Morris. Now, this was some kind of pressure he was facing this time. Now, take a look at here. But look at the initial time. Look at, look at the wall, the offensive line. He gets pressure there at the end, but it gives Morris plenty of time to work against Ricky Price and eventually shake loose and come where else to the middle of the defense. <laughs> Another big yards. I mean, that's the second time we've seen that pump fake from him. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's tough to cover in man coverage for seven seconds. First and ten, and... Here comes Batch around the corner before uh, he's surrounded by the Cowboys. Remember, Oklahoma State has not won in Lubbock since 1944. Everybody talks about, boy, if you're playing against Graham Harrell and that Mike Leach offense, you've got to possess the ball. You've got to run the football and keep Graham Harrell on the sidelines. Tonight, if any team you would think would ever have that chance, it would be Oklahoma State with their running game. And they're not able to keep the ball away from Graham Harrell. He's had it most of the night. <laughs> Offensive ball oh, dropped. That one by Lewis, Detron Lewis. <laughs> Harold knows it should have been caught. A little, little thing about a, a three-year starting quarterback, and most of the quarterbacks in this conference are veterans. That last play, it's incompletion, but just he sees everything. The defense makes an adjustment right before the ball snapped. He stopped the call. He moves Batch off to the left because he sees an outside linebacker is going to blitz. Everybody's picked up, nice and calm, in control. Now the Cowboys back out. Rushing four, first down, comes right back over the middle. Puts it in Lewis's hands, and he hangs on this time. Detron Lewis is overshadowed because of Michael Crabtree, but he's cut from the same cloth with his size. Six, he's about 6'6", six, six, 210 pounds. Again, big, elusive, quick, great hands. What else do you want? What else do you want from a Texas Tech wide receiver? First and goal. Crabtree's off to the right. Here they come. 
Short pressure. Here they come. Crabtree touchdown. That's like stealing, folks. I'm glad you said that it's not fair. I was saying to Billy, now our producer, that's the exact same thing. It's, it's, it's not fair. It's just not fair to see Crabtree inside his five-yard line. Lacey, you've got to know, you've got to take the slant away. I don't care if you move five yards inside of Crabtree, make him go to the outside, make him work to get the touchdown. Second time he's beaten Lacey to the slant for a touchdown. That's too easy for Graham Harrell and Michael Crabtree. Williams converts the extra point. Still rolling. Any doubts about this team, folks? This ESPN telecast is available in high definition on ABC HD. Five consecutive Texas Tech touchdowns. From the seven yard line. So Victor Johnson brings it out to about the 23 yard line and uh, it is not too early to start talking about November 22nd in the Big 12 South. The Red Raiders of Texas Tech at Norman. I can't wait. The Sooners right put 66 up on Texas A&M today. They'll be ready now. Oh, will they ever. The big thing is, <laughs> is Brent Venables going to be ready? The, the, either defensive, the defensive coordinator. coordinator. I'm impressed with what I've seen from Texas Tech the last two weeks. Their front, their defensive line, their linebackers, they are tenacious. I think Oklahoma might have the best offense in the country. And we're going to find out. We'll find out. 35-14, Zach Robinson says, hang on. We're not out of this yet. He's got Des Bryant in a foot race across midfield, and the great speed takes it to the 25-yard line. And the Cowboys hope to jump back. Say, so stop all that sooner talk, man. <laughs> got a penalty flag down. Holding on the offense in the 39. Penalized 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. That was a 49-yard play. So it's from the, uh, it's a spot foul, so it'll bring it back to the 39-yard line. And uh, so the the Cowboys at, will have good at, field position. Look at Dez trying to get his offensive line fired up. And I like to see that. I like to see that emotion to charge up this offensive line. It was a great call to bring Bryant across the middle of the defense where there was a big hole and able to, at that time, they're able to, the Cowboys are able to give him the football. I like that emotion from Dez Bryant. Here's Hunter. Fine runner for a first down. So th this is what Oklahoma State has to do. I know there's nine minutes to go in the third quarter. You think, thinking, boy, they're down, they've got to throw. They've got to continue to run the football. Look at the linemen getting downfield, Denning with a nice block on a linebacker. This is their identity. That's who they are. So the Red Raiders will call a timeout. And defense reeling a little bit. And uh, Coach Max said, get over here now. Let's talk about this. Remember, they let down a little bit in the second half yep. against the Longhorns last week, and uh, he was not happy with that. He, he's, this is a, a, a play where Des Bryant actually got involved. They've not had any ch chance at all tonight to get him downfield to the outside because of the double coverage. So they bring him across the middle on a crossing pattern at about 15 yards, gets in front of McBath. You'll see the holding call come in right there at the end. That's where they made the call, which is a good call. But Des Bryant, just to get his hands on the ball, he almost fumbled that late. See if that can spark Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State's offensive line, very unique. 290, 285, 300 pounds, 295, 290. Today's standards, very, very small and athletic front. 
Robinson fakes the inside handoff. Stands tall to the 10 yard line. Damian Davis's first reception of the game. Play action. When you when you start to run the football, you put it into the belly of Hunter. You're going to get the linebackers up, and then you have the hole behind it. That's part of the package. That's part of the piece of the puzzle and what Oklahoma State wants to do. Now first and goal for the Cowboys. Badly in need of a touchdown. Robinson again off that play action, throwing to Pettigrew in underneath, and he muscles his way inside the five. Zach Robinson's mobility and his strength throwing the football on the run gives Oklahoma State a lot of options when they get down in this area. Kendall Hunter. One with a two tight end look, and I talked to Mike Gunning on the field before the game, and I said, you love the two tight end looks when you get down here, and, and most offensive coordinators will tell you the reason I like that is it creates another gap for the defense to have to be responsible, and it's a simple zone play, and Hunter, because of his vision, cuts to the left and then sees the seam back to the backside, and this time again gets in there. Bad snap, costs them a point. So instead of being down by 14, it's a 15 because of the bad snap. Saturday Night Football on ABC, brought to you by Southwest Airlines, low fares, no hidden fees. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Vote now at coachoftheyear.com. The all-new Acura TL, the most powerful Acura ever built. Acura Advance and Verizon Wireless. Ah, yes, Tom and Bingo's Barbecue, folks. <laughs> One of the best of the state of Texas. Get yourself a good chopped beef sandwich. Well, there's a young man. He wishes he had a snapback. Zach Allen. This will come out on the 20 yard line. Here is a uh, here is a view. It, he snags it in the turf. Hey, you just don't see, you don't see that very often. The turf the turf monster on the snap. Maybe the only time you'll see that all season. So it's 35 20 now first down and 10 and remember five consecutive touchdown drives for the Red Raiders after a fumble on their opening series of the night. 55 points on the board already halfway through the third quarter. Here comes the blitz can't get there again wide open and into midfield. Quentin Leo. Moore, I'm sorry, Brent. Quentin Moore worked himself back to the middle of the field, so it's cover three, and it's an easy seam this time for Graham Harrell to throw to Leong. And one of the things about Oklahoma State, what they're trying to do again, is they're disguising their coverage and they're moving it to snap. That time they guessed wrong, gave Leong the, the middle of the, uh, the field for another simple throw for Graham Harrell. Great recognition and a great throw. Woods not much doing against the middle of the defensive line. Well, here's a show that uh, everybody in this part of the country wants to see. The Country Music Awards, Wednesday, 8, 7 Central. Kenny Chesney's won the last two Entertainer of the Year awards. He's got three in a row and... Uh, Going for three in a row, oh, baby. That's it. And he's already won it three times. Won it in 04. Yeah. The heck happened in 05. Unacceptable. Huh? He, be he better Took win Took too much year. time off. Oh, it's not even <laughs> close. With all due respect to the rest of the contestants. Brad Paisley going to host it. It's always a great show. Wednesday night on ABC Country Music Awards. Now Graham Harrell trying to make sweet music and he does. Lewis. 
Well, Tim Beckman, the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma State, I know one of the things he talked about is having his linebackers sitting in the middle with their heads on a swivel. And that time, Andre Sexton looks around. He's trying to find the spot. <laughs> you just can't keep up with Lewis because of that spacing and recognition of the zone. They find the soft spot every single time. Hottest quarterback in the country has still got it going. Four touchdowns. Will it be five? No. Britain was the receiver. And that time was well defended by Lacey. Yeah, let's give Lacey some credit here. He's it's one on one. Can you make a play? The ball is well thrown. Lacey gets in there. That's that's very good coverage. Ball just by Harold's standards, the ball slightly underthrown, but Lacey did a very good job. He's given up some plays, but that time stepped up and made a play. He's on an island out there with Edward Britton, but made the play that he had to make. Crabtree in the backfield again. Second and ten. This time he goes to a wide open batch. They were ready for the Crabtree play, had it defended, and he knew Batch was on the other side. You and I and everybody else, this is the exact same play where Crabtree acts like he's getting a direct snap, fakes the handoff to Batch. Batch goes off to the, to the left just as a decoy. Crabtree off to the right. You think they're going to try to get it to Crabtree. Oklahoma State all over him. Harrell comes back and throws it to Batch. 369 yards. Harrell has thrown for already four touchdowns no interceptions first down Lewis find the matchup find the zone great throw watch the block in the backside by Crabtree Boom. Comes in there, willing to sacrifice his body. That time on a big safety, Quentin Moore. We've seen it all night tonight. We talk so much about the spacing and the timing and the catches, but how unselfish the entire group of wide receivers, this Texas Tech unit, that's what makes them very unique to me, their versatility. the end zone. Lemon again making a stop. They spread you out inside the five yard line in a shotgun. Four wide receivers. You have to respect that. You have to put defensive backs and it gives you the matchup and a quarterback sneak. Easy runs in the middle. They jam the gaps this time. Now he's going to say okay. So are you going to back off a little bit? A little cat and mouse game now. Throw the fade to the big man. Try to stop it, folks. Just try to stop it. Crab tree again. Remember his last touchdown? I said, for heaven's sakes, take away the slant, make him work to get the touchdown. So they did. They're gonna take away the slant. He gives him a little inside move and says, no problem. Me and my boy, we can throw the fade too. Another touchdown for Crabtree. And I wish they'd worked their timing out. Six consecutive touchdowns for the Red Raiders. Kirk, I want you to think about this in this commercial break here after the Williams extra point. Did they ever, in the history of the Heisman Trophy, saw it in half? <laughs> <laughs> He'll be right back. Well, near the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution. Deach University's general scholarship fund. Graham Harrell and Michael Crabtree are ringing the bell here in Lubbock. This kickoff is a beauty right on the goal line. Cox again picks his way and slammed down at the 26. And let's go to Matt Weiner in New York for an update. Matt, what's going on? Uh, Brent, you've got a couple of nominees there. Here's another nominee for the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week. 
Iowa's Sean Green racked up his 10th straight 100 yard rushing game and a couple of touchdowns made the difference in the Hawkeyes huge win over Penn State. To cast your vote text the word vote to the number you see on your screen to AT&T wireless phone. On first down Hunter. Beats the first wave and picks up about eight or nine. ABC Thursday now at 10 9 Central on all new Life on Mars. That's the uh, new great cop show. I've heard some good things about that. And uh, speaking of reading good things, there's Hunter slipping out to the 29 yard line. And uh, Charbonnet, the transfer from Duke, who scored on an interception against Texas, coming up to make the play, Kirk. I can't say enough about Texas Tech's defense. You know, they, they don't get any credit. They're undermanned. People laugh about the Big 12. Do they play any defense? These guys don't have a lot of NFL players, but they're going to, for Ruff and McNeil, the defensive coordinator, they play hard and they play fast. They'll fight you for four quarters. On third and six. Des Bryant right at that first down marker, and I believe they're going to give him the spot. Uh, your, your best receiver has to make a play against man coverage, especially on a third down. Keep this drive alive, and he was able to do that. Pretty good throw by Zach Robinson. Tight coverage by Jamar Wall. Inside handoff again to Hunter. Williams making the tackle for the Red Raiders. As a freshman, Crabtree had 22 touchdown passes. He has 17 already this year. night this crowd has been right in the thick of things option Robinson's going to keep it first down Whitlock there defensively play like this you've got to be able to sustain blocks watch 87 to the far right the All-American tight end watch him sustain his block he stays on Duncan pushes him to the outside and that allows Robinson to pick up the first down Pettigrew is impressing I think all of us with his ability, ability to block and not just catch the football. Deflected. Incomplete. Better group said I caught it on the ricochet and the umpire said no way. Big Colby Whitlock up at that defensive line sticks his big paw. He didn't have to jump, not much vertical, but he got that big right paw up in the air. To knock it down. How about that? He goes with it. Is that pink? Is that a pink mouthpiece or a red mouthpiece that just is worn out? Big old grappler from Oklahoma. <laughs> I love it. And off to Hunter. Duncan. Still trying to run the football here. Duncan's been active. Marlon Williams has been active. Can't say it enough. The defensive front, the two linebackers, because they've been predominantly in nickel with five defensive backs, they've held their own against this Oklahoma State offensive line. Allowed those safeties to sit back and take away Des Bryant in the passing game. I didn't think the Lovett crowd could be any louder than a week ago, but they have been just as loud here tonight, if not louder. Robinson takes off and picks up another first down. We haven't seen a lot of this, but if you're an Oklahoma State fan, you've seen a lot of it over the course of the last couple years from Zach Robinson. Because it, when he scrambles, it's very different from Graham Harrell. Graham Harrell's going to scramble and try to find an open receiver. There's <laughs> that crazy 
play calling from Oklahoma State. When, when Zach Robinson scrambles, boy, he's accelerating upfield in a hurry. Des Bryant into the red zone. Final seconds about to tick away here. Quarter number three. 62 points. Red Raiders up by 22. And ESPN Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Who was first? Pistol Pete and Stillwater or Raider Red here in Lubbock, folks? Well, it was Pistol Pete a little bit, but one didn't copy the other. Back in the old days of Southwest Conference, they banned live animals traveling to road games. So the Red Raider horse couldn't make road trips. So they came up with Pistol Pete's counterpart called Raider Red back in 1971. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Well, Pistol Pete might not like this because the coverage downfield is so good. You're going to see eventually Perry get in there. Henley also pursuing. How about the rotation here from Ruffin McNeil? You're seeing eight up to nine different defensive linemen continue to rotate in and out to try to stay, stay fresh here for this fourth quarter. They're all playing very well. Second and 14. Great time from the offensive line. Nobody open yet. And he throws it away. Yeah, th this is the opposite of what you see from Texas Tech. When Graham Harrell starts to scramble, his receivers really work to get open. That time, and for Oklahoma State, they're covered. And as Zach Robinson starts to try to find somebody and tries to get to the outside, nobody worked with him at all. And all he could do is just throw the ball away. Just try, just try to call a signal and have it heard by a teammate out there. Fake short, middle, intercepted. Picked off, Darcel McBath. And my man Colby Whitlock took a little bit of a breather, let Perry come in. He applies the pressure, a little pump fake to the screen. This is called throwing and hoping. He didn't even look coming off of the pump screen. He just threw the ball, feeling the pressure from Whitlock. And he had a big interception that time by McBath. But Whitlock closing right in on Zach Robinson. Zach didn't even look to see where his man was. As I said, he came off the pump fake to the screen and just threw it up, hoping the receiver would get there. Will the Red Raiders throw out of their own end zone? <laughs> They're going to run Woods on the first play. There's McBath, his 11th career interception. He had three in one game this year. And of course, he caused an earlier fumble. Recovered one. Now he's had an interception, so a big night for McBath. First down. Fine run by Baron Batch. This is the change from Texas Tech in the past to what we see now. Two very, very gifted running backs and a big physical offensive line. We've talked a lot about it, Brent, in the last couple weeks. And when Oklahoma sees this offense in two weeks, that's the biggest difference that they'll see is trying to defend this offensive line and the running game in this two-dimensional attack. Wide opens Morris again. Finally pushed out of bounds. As we take a look at the ESPNU All-State BCS standings review, Bama won in overtime. Texas Tech leading here. Penn State knocked off by Iowa. Texas a winner today. 
Florida leading 42 7 and so Kirk how are you going to rank uh, the teams. Well we uh, <laughs> in this fun in this fun. <laughs> Here's a handoff and he keeps it. Graham Harrell close to a first down. Nice fake that time and Graham Harrell taking off for the first time this evening. How about that? How about Graham Harrell coming off a little Look zone at the lead here. Look at that smile. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to love that in the film room. Graham Harrell with a rare chance to get upfield and and show you what he can do running the football. I, I've been impressed though, Brent, with his ability to scramble. He'll surprise you with enough mobility to buy time and find receivers. Here's Woods angling toward that first down. Levine, the linebacker over on that side. I think you have to start with Alabama, Brent. And the reason I say that is winning on the road at Georgia, winning on the road uh, today against LSU, a very fired up LSU team. Texas Tech is in it too right now, in my opinion. The Gators, I think, if we're just ranking teams based on who's the best, Florida's probably the best team, and then Texas and Oklahoma. Where's my USC defense? <laughs> This woods spinning. I'm speaking for Pete Carroll. Hey, I'm, I'm with you. USC could be 5B. 5B. If their offense. They lead 10 to 3 over Cal. I know. If their right offense now. happened to be as good as their defense, then they would have no problem being up If their the offense was as good as their defense, they'd have beaten Oregon State. They'd beat everybody. Dallas, okay. They'd beat everybody. It's unbelievable. Morris again. You know, Kirk, only one sack for Oklahoma State against Harold tonight. They've tried all night long. Texas Tech with only two penalties for nine yards. And they've they've tried everything. They've blitzed. They've rushed three. They've dropped eight. They've rushed four. They've played man under. They've tried to change it up every single snap. And Graham Harrell looks at him like, hey, fellas, gotcha. I already know what's coming. Hey, no wonder the athletic director is going to redo Mike Leach's contract here. He's going to be in a battle to keep this guy with offenses like this. I mean, think about the schools that are looking for attacks like this around the country, and that's the running back batch. I mean, the mad scientist, wherever he's gone, remember he went up with Stoops and was the offensive coordinator up there in Norman. I got that show on the road. I mean, it's it's unbelievable watching what he does. What's amazing is that in-depth play truck that he has. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Look at that baby. Some guys, you see Gary well, Patterson, TCU. He's got a rope on his belt and he's got you know wristbands going. He's got going, he's, got all, he's got all green. He's got like, you know, some of these coaches bring Forrest down to right. <laughs> oh, he's got, got like seven plays ahead of his time. Second down and one. In the teeth of pressure that time and up high and incomplete. He was facing a pretty good rush. Third and one. And Donald Booker that time getting in there. He is Booker. not a Longhorn fan. I'm, I'm telling you that, folks, I can promise you. No, sir. That's unbelievable, isn't it? The fifth 400 yard game this season. Five touchdowns. They've had six consecutive scores. Did he get there? Harold a little fired up there. I don't know if looks like he might have gotten it. Yep. They're now seven of nine on third down conversions here tonight. Now I want to show you the last three games folks if, if, if you want to look at something 104 of 138 for over 1200 yards 12 touchdowns and no interceptions and still the third game is in progress. That's his last three games. You talk about why some people are putting him atop the Heisman Trophy list. This is an unbelievable performance. And it continues that time with Lewis. 
The motion with Crabtree, the receivers moving again to the left, to the right. They're moving downfield. The defense doesn't know. It's almost like option football, but through the air. You don't know where the receivers are going to be, and they throw it enough to the outside to make you respect it. But I'd love to see right now if we had a diagram of how many times he's thrown to the middle of the Oklahoma State defense, I bet you it's been 60% of the time. Stacks three on the right. Drops it off to Woods, running for the end zone. Touchdown, Red Raiders. Seven consecutive touchdowns after fumbling on their opening series of the game. If they had to fumble, they might be eight for eight in touchdowns here tonight. Twelve plays, 96 yards. That was a simple hot read. The linebacker came on the blitz. Woods picking up the block. He just sneaks out of the backfield. And Harold just flips it to him. There's nobody there to make a play on Woods. Look, we got 69 points. Is that what it is? 8.52 to go. Red Raiders closing in on 10-0. Did you ever see a football crowd stand for an entire game? Well, welcome to Lubbock. I've seen a student section stand, but I've never seen an entire stadium stand for two straight weeks. Not just a game. Take a knee and coming out the 20. We'll take a break. And... Hey, don't tear up the stadium. <laughs> don't rush the field this early. ABC brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. Nissan, passionate about performance and proud sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. And AT&T, your world delivered. Well, before every home game, the students wrap old Will Rogers with red card paper. That's a landmark on campus. Horse's name, Soap Suds. Zach Robinson, a little bit of a rouse and dazzle. It'll be second down and 10 as they bring Toastin around. And uh, hey, there's, there's the big rascals. I love, I love, not just are they big and they outstanding. Look at, look at these guys. I mean, Brandon Carter's probably the, the leader as far as imagination. Tattoos, he's got the whole WWE face paint going on, whatever that deal is. They got Mohawks. There, there are some characters. Third down and 10. This team's up 49 to 20, and the crowd and the defense, they, they don't want to give up another yard. They're just as excited, if not more excited right now, than at any point in the game. Some teams, they, you know, they lay off the accelerator. You get up by 29 points, and your offense has scored on seven straight possessions. Look at these guys. They are fired up. What else do you do in Lubbock on a Saturday night, Herb Street? <laughs> <laughs> Zach's got time. And suddenly, overthrows, and it's fourth down and 10. Give all the credit with Mike Gundy's offense is outstanding, but all the credit to Ruffin McNeil, the defensive coordinator, his defensive front, and what they've been able to do for the second week in a row in attacking an offensive line and just being relentless in the way they have gone about their business. There's Ruffin. They will not be changing the defensive coordinators no, after this game. Sir. That time, Morris did not let it get past him. Remember early in the first half? This one he gets back near midfield. Can they make it eight consecutive touchdowns? Can the Red Raiders keep it going? Come on back and find out. Yeah. Red Raider fans of all ages here tonight loving this. Second consecutive week. This crowd has been right in the thick of it. 
seven consecutive touchdowns after a fumble on their first possession. <laughs> they're not stopping throwing. They're going for more. Down to the 35-yard line is Morris, who's had a big night. So Mike Leach, the mad scientist, continues to draw it up. And the gunslinger Harrow pulls the trigger. You know what he's reading right now, folks? The wicked wit of Winston Churchill. <laughs> yep. Last week he told a New York Times reporter after the game, he said that Lady Ashley once said to Winston, she was the first female member of parliament, she said, oh, if I were your wife, I'd poison your tea. And Winston shot back at Lady, if I was married to you, I'd drink it. <laughs> and Bastien straight ahead is match. Let's check in down below with Lisa. Well, Brett, uh, we've been seeing this all night. The fans passing the bleachers up the stands. And Kirk said, what do they do when those bleachers get up to the top of the stands? You never really see that. So I asked the fans, what are you doing? And they said, we stand the whole game. We jump up and down on the bleachers, and they break. So we're just getting rid of them. <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> Nor That's have we. That's a first. <laughs> Second down and five. Fumble. Oh, a mistake. Fumble. And the second fumble of the night. And a recovery by Mr. Lemon. Rare mistake. The timing just not there between Harrow and Britton. Britton was a little early, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He was eager. Well, reminded now, stay tuned after the game. You'll late local news over most of these uh, ABC stations. Over on ESPN, of course, uh, Sports Center will have uh, all the highlights. They'll tell you about Alabama's wild wind out in Baton Rouge. Coach Saban returns to Baton Rouge for the first time as head coach of Alabama. And Penn State's title hopes were crushed in Iowa City today. So some big stories coming up in sports. Hunter. Most impressive thing to me today was the fact that Texas Tech pulled off a shocker last week. And for six days, they heard about how wonderful they are and they're going to Miami. I wanted to see how they'd handle prosperity. I wanted to see what kind of attitude they show up with tonight. They really, really impressed us with this performance. Here is Zach going down at the 30-yard line, Colby Whitlock, and uh, we've got a flag on this play, and uh, your buddy, Mr. Corso, mm -hmm. immediately after the game, he picked Oklahoma State to win this game. Immediate. And again he today. Did. Yeah. Again today. And he, and, on the offense, and it looked like 76. he was excited to do it. Too. The climb. Well, let's go to Matt Weiner in New York for an update. Matt? Hi, right, Brent. Graham Harrell's not the only Heisman candidate quarterback having a great night. This Verizon Wireless update from Nashville. Check out Tim Tebow, the reigning Heisman winner, who has five total touchdowns on the evening, 27 on the season. It's all academic. Florida will play Alabama in the SEC championship game. And, of course, Tebow ultimately could vote for himself if he wants to. Tebow back in the thick of things. The Gators are back in the thick of things in the BCS. Yeah, good point now as uh, Robinson goes sideline, and uh, his receiver over there was very well covered that time. And uh, Charbonnet, he is down there on the, uh, the sideline. That's Daniel Charbonnet. Well, you can we see him kneeling down there and uh, shaking up a little bit. But last week, Texas Tech's defense played exceptionally well in the first half, and then Texas started to dominate things in the second half. You could tell that's been a point of emphasis for Ruff and McNeil and his, and his group. Gave up 14 in the first half, and so far only six in the second half. That is the third three and out for Oklahoma State here tonight. Morris cuts up field, and uh, there's a penalty flag down at the 42-yard line. I think Graham Harrell's going to come out for more. Block in the back on receiving team number 24. Ten-yard foul. First out. Timeout on the field. Very good point. In two weeks, perhaps the game of the year, or at least the next one, will take place up in Norman. Time out. Monday Night Football, ESPN, 8.30 Eastern. Mike Tirico and the gang. It'll be the 49ers and the Cardinals. Can the 49ers hang in there against Kurt Warner? 
And the surprisingly potent Cardinals this year. That was a shot of Larry Fitzgerald. Folks looking at Michael Crabtree tonight. Larry Fitzgerald, one of the best receivers in the National Football League. And uh, Taylor Potts has stepped in. The backup quarterback has stepped in. Taylor Potts and Graham Harrell's work night is over. And here's the young man out of Abilene, 6'5", 218. And uh, underneath that chin strap, pretty good growth of hair down there, <laughs> big fella. <laughs> and uh, Leach was telling us the other day at practice as we watched him work out that uh, this youngster's got a pretty good arm, and uh, I suspect we're about to find out. He never calls off the dogs. I mean, he, this is the way they play. Snap that one off. Uh, Lewis. He's probably next to Lima Cram Harold. It's, it's been his night tonight. 40 of 50 for 456 yards with five touchdowns and seven straight scoring possessions. It's been everything. Throwing the ball to the backs, making great decisions, came in after last week's performance as the Heisman front runner, at least in my mind, and helped himself tremendously. Look at him and Ruffin McNeil there on the sidelines. Can't forget Colt McCoy over there in Austin. Yep. Now we can't forget Tim Tebow. And uh, here comes the young man, Todd Walker, with his first grab of the night. And uh, that ties his career high with six touchdown passes here tonight. 69 points, the total on the board. And we've got four and a half minutes to work with. You mentioned we talked Harold, we talked McCoy, we talked Tebow. And there's a gentleman out of Norman, Oklahoma, that in two weeks Got his chance. What a game and what an opportunity and what a stage Sam for Bradford. those two teams and those two quarterbacks. Yep, Sam Bradford. Both are idle next week. Both Texas Tech and Oklahoma. We've got two weeks to talk about that showdown. And now we want to take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. And uh, to be perfectly honest about uh, this matchup, it was pretty one-sided with the three touchdown grabs by Crabtree. And uh, Dez was very quiet, especially in the first half. Yeah, Texas Tech did a great job of controlling the running game with their front. It allowed them to double Dez the entire first half and most of this football game. And of course, it was a matter of time till Crabtree got loose and came up with some touchdowns. He came up with three on the night. Right over the middle and complete to Swindle. Here he comes. This, folks, is the backup, the sophomore. The heir apparent here drops back. Looks just as comfortable as Graham Harrell. I mean, he gets back there. He's looking down the field. He's like, man, this looks as easy out here in the pocket as it does from the sidelines. I'll take that throw. This is their personality, so they're not calling it off. This is what they do for a living here in Lubbock. The offensive line has played so well for uh, Coach Leach. Boy, what a good looking arm that is. Out of bounds and a first down. Jacoby Franks, and uh, here are some of the things that happened on Thursday. Utah with a dramatic rally, edging TCU and knocking TCU out. Alabama in overtime, won by a touchdown. They intercepted uh, a pass in the end zone. LSU had the ball first in overtime, and of course, the big one in the Midwest as Iowa knocks Penn State, I'm sure, out of championship consideration. And congratulations to Kirk Ferentz. Been felt a lot of heat in Iowa City. That's a huge win for he and his staff and his players. Here's Woods on a sprint. End zone. Touchdown, Red Raiders. We go into the 70s. Brent Shannon Woods has had a huge football game for this offense. He's the complete back. Batch, Baron Batch will come in. But Woods, that's his second straight touchdown. A similar play, racing to the corner of the end zone, picks up a nice block by Edward Britton. But boy, they, I think this, uh, this offense with these backs, and I remember when Torn Henderson was in this offense, he was a great back and a great fit. But when you combine Woods and Batch together, Gives them, gives them a lot of weapons out of that backfield. And uh, shaking up is a Lemon, who's played a whale of a game. 
Let's go to the one loss BCS teams and let's let's talk about it now they have uh, Penn State of course had that big win that you saw over Ohio State but uh, take a look at what Texas has been through the uh, the minefield beating Oklahoma Oklahoma State and uh, Missouri and Florida a couple of big wins Oklahoma's beat TCU they've got Texas Tech ahead of them and then the USC USC has a hard time jumping up because of the fact that the Pac-10 has lost some bad non-conference games. Yeah, I think the, the resume when I look at those teams tells me that Texas has the best resume based on what they've been able to do no in the games that they've been able to win. But if I'm looking at who's the best team, it's Florida. I, and I'm not trying to push Florida. I'm just saying <laughs> Florida right now in the last five minutes. You know weeks, why I'm chuckling? Huh? You were on Florida in August. I, 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 <laughs> I did happen to be on Florida <laughs> and USC. In that's August. true. That's true. We've all, we've all had to adjust from time to time. I might. I, like, I still like that Florida USC. That'd be a heck of a probably, game now. Hey, hey, Matt Weiner, what do you got up in the Big Apple for us, partner? <laughs> Uh, Brett, we got a sports center right now, powered by Vizio. Just to recap, five unbeatens left out there. Penn State no longer is among them. Daniel Murray's 31-yard field goal with time running out sent the Lions home losers from Iowa City. Meanwhile, out in Los Angeles, USC has just gotten an insurance touchdown. Mark Sanchez or Ronald Johnson there against Cal and USC with one loss and unlikely to face a ranked opponent the rest of the way. So there we have the big stories and of, of course here I guess the only question left to be resolved and, and I'm assuming that Alabama will hold on going on the road into uh, LSU yes. but uh, Texas Tech will certainly stay a solid number two but the, the ranking of those teams below them going to be very interesting. It is. It is. I mean Florida's probably going to be up there and then after that you know you look at Texas they beat Oklahoma head to head but Oklahoma's ahead of them and in the polls you would think that eventually that will work itself out think about what Oklahoma still has ahead of them with Oklahoma State and of course Texas Tech in a couple weeks return from the 15 this is ball bowling and there's a penalty flag you can see it coming flying in there How about Nebraska today huge win yeah, they were a slight favorite at home, winning by 10. There's the 66 Oklahoma put up. Texas over Baylor. Missouri beating back Kansas State. Kansas State, of course, making a coaching change next year. And uh, Colorado beating Iowa State. Iowa State stayed close with them. Yeah. Texas Tech fans, I'm sure, are going to say, why aren't we number one? We should be number one. And who knows? Maybe they will. But you know what? At this point, you control your own destiny. No question. Don't worry. Win your games on the field, and you'll go to the national championship. The BCS no longer is a controversy as far as you're concerned. If you win your games, you'll be where you think you deserve to be, and that's the national title. So whether you're one or you're two, don't bother arguing with your friends. Doesn't matter. Stop calling the local call-in shows. Doesn't matter. Win and you're oh, in. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. What else are those guys going to talk about? Well, you know, just don't argue about the BCS because Texas Tech <laughs> is taking care hey. of. Win and yeah, you're in. There's, there's a new controversy regarding the BCS. The president-elect. I know. Monday night interview with my friend Chris Berman. That was huh? good, huh? 18 playoff he won. So I thought that was pretty interesting. That was an interesting night. <laughs> There's Johnson. He's the running back for uh, Oklahoma State. Now is he? Uh, that was great. I was really happy to see. Right off, you know, first answer. What, what do you what do you want to do? What do you want to change in all of sports? Yeah, he said, right for it. Enough for the beast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can have an A team. Yeah. Uh, President like Barack Obama, you can have it if you push for the six conference championship champions. Do not dilute the regular season. It has been fumble. Out of bounds, Oklahoma State football. That was Johnson. I'll tell you where the BCS will get really messy is if Texas Tech goes to Norman in two weeks and loses. <laughs> then. Well, here's one for you. Then. You know what happens if it's gonna get Texas wins crazy. out? It's going to get crazy. And then you know Florida the beats South? Alabama. No, no, no. Forget that. You if know that what happens, happens in the Big 12 South? What? Three-way tie. BCS standings. You got it. And how do you how are you going to rank those teams? The unbelievable. Who do you rank ahead of who? 
Unbelievable. See, Texas Tech can make it simple. Just If they just win, it's very simple as far as the Big 12 South is concerned. And the Red Raiders, of course, they've, they're idle. And uh, there's what they've accomplished. They've got the game left on the 22nd with Oklahoma. They close out here in Lubbock with Baylor. They'll be a big favorite in that game. It's going to be kind of interesting to see uh, who's favored up at Norman. I would think that uh, there's a chance the Sooners. I, I would you don't see surprised. them underdogs at home. Oh. It's kind of team like this very often, yeah. huh? Imagine there's Johnson again. Imagine a point total in that game. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, while we're talking about scoring and offenses and that, you got to give a lot of credit to the Texas Tech defense here tonight, oh, holding oh, Okie oh. State to 20 points. Kevin Ruffin McNeil, a game ball. They played exceptionally well on that side. Well, let's go to Lisa Salters. Lisa. Thanks, Brent. I'm with the two stars. Graham, I'm going to start with you. Here we go again. How did you make it look so easy again? Well, we just came out and executed. We played really well. Uh, the offensive line did a great job protecting me. And when they play well, we're going to be tough to beat because, uh, you know, the skill guys out there are going to make plays. So if the offensive line gives us time, the receivers make plays, uh, we're a pretty good offense. The initial drive, you fumble. What changed after that so dramatically? Well, you know, uh, we, uh, they didn't stop us on that drive. We stopped ourselves. We fumbled the ball. And, uh, you know, after that, we're just like, hey, we're, let's just calm down and keep playing. And that's exactly what we did. We just kept playing. Uh, things turned around. We got on a roll, and uh, they couldn't stop us tonight. What kind of pressure were they getting on you? Because it didn't look like a whole lot. Not very much. That's what I said. That offensive line is unbelievable. Uh, you know, they're, they're the best offensive line I've ever played behind. They're great pass protectors. They're great run blockers. And they're, uh, they're a big part of this. They're the heart of this team. Thanks a lot, and congratulations Thanks, again. You. Michael, on to you. You had three touchdowns on the night. Pick one. What was your favorite? Uh, probably the last one. I yeah. caught the end zone, uh, the corner of the end zone. Uh, it seemed like a, a rerun because uh, we do it a lot. So I'm like, oh, this, that was the best one. Now, last week you said that you dreamt about the outcome of the game. Did you have any premonitions about this one? Oh, no. I went in this game uh, just doing my job, and, 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 and it worked out real good. All right. Thanks a lot. Congratulations to you. Fred? All right, Lisa. Thank you. And uh, tonight, Chevrolet, players of this game. No question about the Red Raiders quarterback and the performance of Graham Harrell here tonight. He was a star all game long, throwing for 456 yards, six touchdowns, and no interceptions. Kendall Hunter had a fine game, running for 112 yards and scoring twice for Oklahoma State. So once again, our final score, 56 to 20. Texas Tech moves to 10 and 0. Next Saturday, Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, will have either Oklahoma State at Colorado or Boston College at Florida State. Kirk, you and I and Lisa will be down there in Tallahassee. So check your local listings for the game in your area. Folks, we thank you very much for watching ESPN on ABC. Have a great weekend. But the leader, Texas Tech, after knocking off Texas last week, Oklahoma State coming into Lubbock. Two straight top 10 matchups out in West Texas. Graham Harrell threw for 646 against the Pokes last season. His team lost that game 49-45. That was the I'm a man on 40 game. Harrell, Edward Britton, and Tech, after turning it over the first time, just went off on offense. Harold to the elf, Eric Morris right over the middle. What a terrific job by the little guy catching the ball over the middle. He knows he's going to take a lick, but he holds onto the ball for the first down. Hey, it's not just Crabtree. How about Detron Lewis? Well, they have five different receivers that have caught well over 30 receptions this year. I just enjoy saying this. To the elf! <laughs> Morris again, and now to the man, Michael Crabtree. 16th touchdown catch of the season. Crabtree kept his streak alive with at least five catches and a touchdown. Now 13 straight games. Only Larry Fitzgerald has a longer streak than that in college football history. 28-14. Now the score, Zach Robinson, Brandon Pettigrew. That football was not riveted to his rib cage. A turnover for the Red Raider defense. Harold Crabtree. Could someone say the two-time Bolitnikoff winner? Uh, Crabtree, the best wide receiver in the game? I don't think there's any question about that. There was any question. Crabtree settled it. Not that move. Oof. Shaking the guy. I'd put three guys on him. That won't be enough. 35-20. <laughs> oh, let's see if he can catch the fade. Yep. Third touchdown of the game for Crabtree. 
Hey, after that opening fumble, these guys, look at that move, reeled off seven straight touchdown drives. Wow, that was incredible. That's moving the chains. Crabtree, eight catches, 89 yards, 56 to 20 is the final. And Harold, by the way, 40 of 50 for 456, six touches, no interceptions. And here's the list I was talking about. Crabtree with the five catches and a touchdown. He had three touchdowns in this game. Only Larry Fitzgerald has a longer streak. And